November 1998. We are getting close to the end of the year. Almost up to 1999. We're going to have to party. According to Prince. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, nothing major going on life-wise. Still just working at Frame Art Galleries in Woodmere. And uh, hanging out with folks and living in North Ridgeville. So let's jump into the books that I read in November of 1998. And the first one follows directly from the last book I read in October of 1998. Uh, so the first book in November was X-Men and Spider-Man Times Arrow, Book 2, The Present, by Tom DeFalco and Adam Troy Castro. And so Kang is trying to destroy the timeline, the multiverse, everything, basically. In the first book, uh, a photo, an old, old, old photo was discovered that showed Spider-Man and Bishop back in the Old West. And so they did some time traveling to stop Kang, figure out what's going on. Now it's the present, except Spider-Man and Bishop have come back to the present, but it's an alternate reality. In the world they end up in, the X-Men work for the government, and they're trying to hunt down anybody with superpowers and lock them up. Meanwhile, in the real present, uh, the X-Men are running around fighting a lot of Spider-Man villains. And again, they're all just trying to stop uh, Kang, Spider-Man and Bishop trying to get back to their reality. And I followed that up with X-Men and Spider-Man Times Arrow Book 3, The Future, by Tom DeFalco and Alaki Bess-Shahar. I don't know if I'm even close to pronouncing that correctly. So now, of course, the future. Uh, and in this case, the future is 2020 and 2035. Um, I'm guessing they went with 2020 because... There was a, a character, Iron Man 2020, who I believe was Arno Stark, he was a cousin or something of Tony Stark, had really cool looking armor in my opinion. And then I think 2035 is because that's where the original Guardians of the Galaxy were, and they're in this book. I don't know if Iron Man 2020 was in this, I don't remember, but I believe the original Guardians of the Galaxy are in this. Um, it's not the Guardians that we know from the movies. Although they did have a cameo in uh, Guardians Volume 2. Um, Stallone played one of them. And they showed some of the others. I don't remember all the actors and characters. And I don't know if they're in Volume 3 because I haven't seen it yet. Um, but again, Spider-Man and the X-Men trying to stop Kang. Traveling through time. Meeting different characters. A lot of name dropping and cameos and stuff in these books. They're fun. I like this kind of thing. I like the time travel. I like alternate realities. And I like uh, just all these characters thrown together. So I followed those two up with Caliban's Hour by Tad Williams. And this is uh, basically, essentially based on The Tempest by some Shakespeare guy. But it takes place after those events. Um, Caliban has gotten away from the island. And he goes to see Miranda. Her father's dead. Caliban finds Miranda and basically tells his story, or his version of his story. So we get it's basically a autobiography of Caliban, and he's telling this to Miranda. Um, it, I think it was okay. I, I have not read a lot of Tad Williams. This might be the only Tad Williams I've ever read. He's a big fantasy author. Um, but it's pretty good. It was interesting, especially... I'm not a huge Shakespeare fan, but if you are, I think this is an, the, an interesting kind of book. I followed that up with The Son of John Devlin by Charles Kenny. Uh, Charles Kenny was a reporter for the Boston Globe, and this is about... Um, the local government wants to weed out corruption in the police force in Boston. And Jack Devlin, 
let's see. Jack Devlin uh, is the guy that's tasked with essentially, again, weeding out all this corruption. But his father, John Devlin, was a cop who died in disgrace. He committed suicide before he could go to trial for some stuff. Some bad, bad stuff, being a bad cop. And so as John Devlin is weeding out corruption, he digs into what actually happened with his father. And I believe there are people that, you know, don't want the truth to come out kind of thing. Um, so pretty interesting thriller. I enjoyed it. Next up, The Beast Within, edited by Stuart Wyke. Not sure how I pronounce his name. This is a uh, Vampire the Masquerade anthology. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade being the role-playing game from White Wolf. And uh, it's a bunch of short stories that all take place in the same city. So there's some interconnectedness. But featuring different clans of vampires and different characters and stuff. And uh, it was fine. It's not the best World of Darkness, Vampire the Masquerade stuff I've read, but it's always interesting. It's a nice introduction, I think, um, to the World of Darkness and Vampire the Masquerade because you get the different clans and what they're all about and and uh, how they all interact within the same city. Then we have Hammurabi's Code by Charles Kenny. This is actually his debut novel. Um, I'm guessing that I found the son of John Devlin at the library and enjoyed it enough that I went back and found something else by Charles Kenny. So Hammurabi's Code, um, a city councilman, this is again in Boston, and a city councilman is murdered, and he was uh, sort of a saint, for lack of a better way to put it, just always trying to help everybody make the city a better for everybody. And after his death, this reporter, Frank Cronin, is assigned to look into it, and he starts digging. As he starts digging, of course he... I shouldn't say of course, but it's a novel, so you know um, things aren't going to go quite right. Uh, he he finds that this this councilman wasn't the saint that everybody thought he was. Um, in fact, he was quite dirty. And again, there are people that don't want this to get out. Shenanigans ensue. Uh, again, pretty good book. If you like that kind of thing, kind of thriller. Um, a little... Um, oh my goodness, John Grisham kind of thing. But without the lawyer being the main a lawyer being the main character. Next up, Resurrection Man by Sean Stewart. This is about an angel named Dante Ratke. Uh, this is sort of an alternate reality world where um, after World War II, even though uh, there's technology, all the technology we'd be familiar with, there's also magic in the world. And Dante has psychic abilities. And after he discovers... What appears to be his own dead body, he and his family start digging into uh, why they've found this body that looks just like Dante, and you know what it means. They dig into their family history, dig into the magic of the world. Um, I don't really remember much about it, one way or the other. Then the only book that I still have, <laughs> Captain America: Holocaust for Hire, by Joseph Silva. Uh, this is one of those Marvel books from the 70s. 1979. And it's just Captain America versus the Red Skull. Red Skull wants to create a new Holocaust. And Captain America, Captain America is out to stop him. Uh, I find these to be fun little books. Not as good as like the current crop of Aconite books. Marvel books being put out by Aconite Press. Um, but they're fun. Simple Marvel comic novel. Then I went from that little thing to something big, The Damnation Game by Clive Barker. 
I really don't remember much about this one at all. Um, some gambler guy that wins big in some way and uh, hides himself away in a fortress and evil is coming to get him. Something. Uh, I really couldn't find a good description uh, with my quick search online. And it's been, obviously, decades since I read it. It is one that I would like to read again. Apparently, Clive Barker's very first full-length novel. Uh, and I remember enjoying it. Then, I went back to Captain America. Captain America, Liberty's Torch by Tony Isabella and Bob Ingersoll. This is one that came out in the 90s. It had a very, just a silver, very reflective silver cover with Captain America. On the front, no title, author, anything. Just reflective silver, Captain America. And uh, basically this group called Liberty's Torch captures Captain America and puts him on trial for the crimes of America. And he's got to defend himself, defend America, and find a way out and stop these people. It was okay. It was definitely not my favorite of the Marvel novels that were coming out in the 90s. There were some really good ones. This one was meh. But a great book, Six Days of the Condor by James Grady. Of course, made into the movie Three Days of the Condor, starring Robert Redford. This is about a guy named Malcolm who... Seems like a mild-mannered guy with a boring job. He works in an office where they read uh, periodicals and newspapers and things. But it's actually a front for the CIA. And they're combing through all this stuff looking for coded messages from other world powers. And Malcolm one day goes to lunch early because he wants to uh, see this hot secretary that he sees on the street occasionally. Uh, but when he comes back from lunch, everybody in his office has been murdered. And so he calls the CIA, uh, uses his code name Condor, tells him what's going on. And he's supposed to meet up. He's supposed to be brought in from the cold, meet up with two agents. But when he does, one of the agents tries to kill him. And so then he goes on the run and has to figure out you know, who's a good guy, who's a bad guy, who he can trust, what's going on, what was discovered by these people reading stuff that somebody doesn't want to get out. Really, really thrilling book. Um, I think I watched the movie. I can't remember, but I do know I really, really enjoyed the book. Then we're getting weird. Reality is What You Can Get Away With by Robert Anton Wilson. And the description of the book, the way I remember the description of the book back when I read it was... What if aliens came to a devastated Earth and what they found was a bunch of movies and stuff, movies and TV shows and things, and they thought that was our history, um, which is a fascinating concept. But what the book seems to be in reality is kind of that, but these alien archaeologists come to Earth and unearth a script and think that that's our history. And then the, the major chunk of the book, maybe, is that script. Um, I don't recall. I do know Robert Anton Wilson writes some wild, weird, philosophical, bizarre stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And this was a weird, philosophical, bizarre book. So if you're into that kind of stuff, um, into what is reality... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is a, an interesting book to read. Then we have Voice of Our Shadow by Jonathan Carroll. And this I remember absolutely nothing about, but it's, uh, I'd look it up. It's about a writer who's getting over his teenage brother's death or still dealing with his teenage brother's death. He goes to Paris, hooks up with some people, and is being haunted by his brother supposed to be a horror novel, um, but I remember absolutely nothing about it. Then Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Return to Chaos by Craig Shaw Gardner. 
and in this, some druids come to town, to Sunnydale, and uh, it's this guy, D George, and his three nephews, and at first, they're hanging out with the Scooby gang, and Xander is hoping that they can help him basically develop some skills to be more helpful with the slaying and things. Oz um, is hoping that they can help him with his werewolfishness. And, but of course, it turns out George is evil. And uh, Buffy and the Scooby gang have to take him on. Uh, Craig Shaw Gardner, usually a really good writer. And I think this is just a middling. It's okay, but not the best of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer books. The penultimate book, Hawk Moon by Ed Gorman. Uh, this is the second book with, I have to look at the character's name, Robert Payne, a criminologist. And he's called in to investigate when two um, Native American women are murdered. This is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And the story jumps from present day to early 1900s and some crimes that were committed then so it keeps jumping back and forth between these two timelines as um robert payne right is that what i said robert payne is trying to solve this modern day murder um pretty decent book i i think this was the series where i, where I just had the feeling that this was sort of um thomas harris you know, Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs kind of thing, because you have a, a profiler, essentially, a serial killer, and but but sort of throwing in the Old West. But it's Ed Gorman. It's good stuff. And then finally, Dark Prince by Keith Herber. This is a Vampire the Masquerade, World of Darkness novel. And the main character is a vampire named Sullivan. He's in San Francisco. And he's uh, framed for cannibalizing another vampire or other vampires. And so all the clans are after him and he has to survive. Clear his name. Um, I dig the Vampire the Masquerade stuff. The different clans, the politics, and everything. Generally... I like my vampires to be monsters, and the vampires in Masquerade can be monsters, but there's also, again, a lot of infighting and politics and uh, pretty decent world building, which you need for a role-playing game, which is what Vampire the Masquerade is. Uh, but it's, it's uh, I enjoy these books. And that was it. That is what I read in November of 1998. I should not have closed my notebook. Because I did not think of a question ahead of time, so I'm going to take a quick look and see. Um, all right. Boom. Caliban's Hour by Tad Williams is what jumped out at me. So, is there, this is my question for the video, obviously, can you think of, is there a work of classic fiction from which you would like to see a story from a secondary character's perspective. I don't know that Caliban is necessarily a secondary character, but um, you know we've 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 read this story. We've followed the main characters. What what book would you like to see? A different character's perspective, I guess, is possibly the easiest way to put it. The best way to put it. I'm trying to think of an example, because, of course, I did not think ahead of time. Um, but let's say... I'm trying to think of Stephen King for some reason. Um, well, I can tell you, Brian Keene did it with The Rising, and then... Um, the Rising Deliverance, I think, is the one where we get... Uh, so The Rising, of course, tells the story. We're following the main character, 
through this zombie apocalypse as he's trying to get to his son. And the Rising Deliverance, if I'm remembering the correct book, takes one of the characters that we met in The Rising and tells us his story, basically up to the point that we meet him in The Rising. And I don't think it follows, because we've already seen what happens to him in The Rising, so I think it's his story previous to us meeting him in The Rising. Uh, so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, and I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Actually, interestingly enough, I'm going to be recording a review for a book uh, shortly that has a short story. And one of the characters in that story goes off for like four and a half hours, I believe they say. And then as soon as that short story is over, we have the field report where that that character files and tells us what happened in that four and a half hours. That was kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, I do not have an answer for you. <laughs> um, but I did give you some examples. That should be something. You folks have the advantage of being able to think of this before you reply. I don't want to sit here... Uh, for half an hour trying to think of something. So that's the question. Hopefully you can come up with some answers. If not, you know, whatever. Comments are always open for anything. But let me know your answer if you have one in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H 5757. That's it. That's all I have for you this week. So until next week, read more books.